Hello, everyone. Have you ever been in a situation where you would like to use a certain chart type with a pivot table, for example, a sunburst chart, and then get a message like this asking you to select a different chart type? In this video, I will show you a trick how to overcome such a problem on the example of a sunburst chart. A sunburst chart is used for displaying hierarchical data, with each level being represented by a circle. The last levels are on the outer part of the chart. You can think of it as a multi-level pie chart. For example, it can be used to display sales breakdown, so basically where the sales are coming from. I will show you how to make this chart interactive and dynamic by linking it to a pivot table and reprogramming a slicer to expand and collapse instead of filter. Let's start! As a first step, I'm going to convert this data range to a table by clicking it and pressing Ctrl and T together. Then I'll add a pivot table. It is generally good practice to first convert the data range to a table because I can add more data to it later and just update the pivot table. Now I'll drag product category, brand, and product fields into the rows area and sales to the values area. Under Pivot Table Tools and Design, I'm going to choose Tabular Layout and repeat all item labels. Also, I will remove all subtotals. Now, if I try to apply a sunburst chart, I will get this message that this is not possible. So I need a trick to tie the sunburst chart to the pivot table. The trick is to use named ranges containing dynamic formulas as chart references. I will need two formulas, one for the values and one for the categories. For the categories, I'm going to type the following formula. The first cell with the categories is the cell A4. And the last cell with the categories is going to be dynamic and defined by the index function. Index of columns A to D. The row number will be defined by the count A function. Count A of column A. plus 2, because I have two spare rows before the pivot table. And the column number will be specified by count A of row 3 minus 1. Minus 1 because I don't want the values column, column D in this case. So count A counts the number of entries to be used in the row and column specifications of the index function. Please note the fixed references. This is necessary for using this formula in the name manager. Let me cut the formula. And under formulas, name manager, define a new name. Sunburst categories. And just paste the formula here. For the values, the first cell may be dynamic based on the number of columns in the pivot table. So I will type index of the columns A to D for the row number number 4 and for the column number which should be dynamic count A of the row 3 and this will give me the first value to index of columns A to D the 
the row number specified by count A, again, column A, plus 2, and for column number, count A, of row 3. Let me cut the formula. And define a new name. Sunburst values. And paste the formula. Now just add a chart and under select data, add a series. The series name is in cell E2 and the series values should start with the sheet name followed by an exclamation mark and the name of the dynamic named range for values. For the categories, I will again type the sheet name and sunburst categories. Now I just need to remove the grand total from the pivot table. And change the chart type to a sunburst chart. So why is this useful? If I play around with a pivot table, then the chart is going to adapt itself. So I can use the full flexibility of a pivot table in a chart that normally could not be used with it. Normally, a slicer filters a pivot table, but I will show you how to reprogram a slicer to expand and collapse instead of filter. Let's copy the pivot table and only leave brand in the rows area. Add a slicer Open the Visual Basic Editor with the key combination Alt and F11 Click on the sheet containing the second pivot table and paste the following code Let me walk you through this code the macro is started when a pivot table is updated on sheet 3. The reason for the second pivot table is that the slicer selection alone cannot trigger an event to start a macro, but updating a table connected to the slicer can. On sheet 3 I have two pivot tables. One is called pivot table 5. The other pivot table 9 The slicer is connected only to pivot table 9, not to pivot table 5 and is called slicer brand Update of any pivot table on sheet 3 can trigger the event, so I will specify that only an update of pivot table 9 can start the code. Two variables need to be declared, pf as pivot field and item as a slicer item. The next line is for troubleshooting, so if an error occurs, just exit sub. The variable pf 
will be pivot field brand of pivot table 5 on sheet 3. And at the beginning, before the loop, it should be collapsed. Then comes the loop. For each slicer item of the brand slicer, it should be checked if it is selected or not. If the item is selected, then the pivot item of the field brand corresponding to its value should be expanded. Let me also add option explicit at the top. Because I declared two variables, this will prevent them from being typed the wrong way. And let's test. Changing the slicer selection updates the second pivot table, which triggers an event to start the macro, updating the first pivot table, which in turn affects the chart. I can also multi-select and choose several brands. If you would like to use this code in your own file, then please adapt the name of the second pivot table, the name of the sheet on which the first pivot table is, the name of the first pivot table, and the field that needs to be expanded or collapsed, as well as the name of the slicer to your own file. The macro needs to be embedded into the sheet on which the second pivot table is. You can also add an additional sheet and put the second pivot table over there. Then the macro needs to be embedded into this new sheet. If you liked the video, please like and subscribe for more contents like this.